Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Video True Dad, and welcome back to Fallout 76. Where last time I actually managed to finish up one of Abby's quests. I managed to, you know, avoid getting distracted long enough to do that, which is marvellous. So, today I'm hoping we can wrap up Abby full stop, load a master holotape into Sam's terminal, and then just take all that data and shove it into some form of radio tower, seems to be the implication. Well, uh, I feel like I've got good coverage of the map right now. Whichever radio tower it needs to be uploaded into, we've got to have a fast travel location pretty bloody close to there. However, before we do that... Just a couple of quick updates, including uh, something a little bit on the curious side, actually. So, I keep forgetting to bloody upgrade the Blade of Bastet, which is right now only level 25. Uh, so let's get up to level 45, except... Why is there no level 55 variant? That feels weird to me. I don't know why there's not a level 55 variant for that. And then I checked, and the same is actually true for the voice of Set. It's got a level 25, 35, and 45 variant, but... Even though I'm beyond level 55, that's not shown up. So, I'm kind of hoping a new one shows up at, say, level 60. Otherwise, the voice of Set is going to start falling behind at some point. Which is a shame, because it has been a faithful friend to me so far. Also, I agree with the comments. The single-action revolver just is not working for me right now. I mean, just look at it. In terms of straight damage output, it's worse than the compensated heart and pipe revolver. Quite significantly. The reload time is appalling. I'm just going to break that down and hope one day I stumble across a plan for the Western Revolver. Because that one might theoretically have legs. Though now I think about it, if I do actually want to make my way to Charleston, and I'm a little bit low on money right now, I've kind of burnt all my money buying plans from a robot at some point or other. There is a whole bit of the map I haven't actually bothered visiting around these parts recently. Including, yeah, big old tower of some description, Big old house, and somewhere I have been wanting to visit, which is Site Charlie. Because I know for a fact the Overseer went from Alpha to Bravo and said she was going to check out Charlie next. So, uh, yeah, after she gets to Charlie, presumably there's a tape there that says where she goes next. But after she's made it to all three silos and not been able to get into any of them, where would she logically go? Also, there's a wanted person over there. A level 30, and I can't see what the actual bounty is, unfortunately. You know what? I'll check in on you later. If it's just a 10 cap bounty, it's not really worth my time to go and claim it. And you probably just accidentally shot someone's house or something. Right, let's head south and check out all of that then. We'll start at the White Springs Bunker. That's nice and close. You know, I've forgotten how much the White Spring Bunker entrance genuinely looks like the real Greenbriars Bunker. <laughs> It's kind of creepy, actually. That looks very, very familiar indeed. I've been right here. They took our cameras and phones off us, by the way. You're not even allowed to, like, take in any form of photography equipment. That gets confiscated off you. They were very serious about that, despite the fact the whole thing was decommissioned, like, a decade ago or something. Right! Where are we going again? Yes, we're going south. If I just put a little... If I just put a marker in this sort of a direction. How about over here? Yeah, move the marker to there. Just head in that direction and keep an eye out for any actual little map markers on the way. There should be something fairly major, because there's, yeah, like a big old house around here, and then also, if we swing over this direction, I'm really hoping that's a white spring robot, because if it is, those guys are friendly, and that's fine. Ooh, it's a bear! Taken down, did you just take down a sentry bot? Oh, flipping well done! Gutsy's managed to win in the end, but well done! Taking out a sentry bot is no mean feat! Right, here we go. We've got a house here. That's going to be my destination. Though, admittedly, there is... Yeah, there's a snake on the map right there. Nothing around there, though, which is kind of interesting. But then there was a sunflower on the map way up north and no actual sunflower to be found. So, I guess some of these things are just, like, decorative. Like, you know, the dragons on old tiny maps. Here we go. That's my destination. A big old house that's deemed to be important enough to actually put on the map. But why? What's so important about some random house in the middle of nowhere? Well, I'll give you. It's a decent size. Alright. Over to the side. Mountainside bed and breakfast. Officially, just a hotel. Though it does look like, yeah, there's quite a few floors here. Hello! You're level 54, are you? Well, that's absolutely fine. We'll just shoot you in the face until you die. Well, nothing much here as far as I can tell. There's a little terminal up in reception that's just got a couple of uh, comments from guests. Just a bunch of stuff like, hey, we had a lovely time, or no, we had a terrible time, or hey, I was here when the bombs fell. Oh no, I'm sad because everybody I know is dead. 
There is, however, yeah, one thing I spotted outside that was a little bit of a surprise, because, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure why this would be here. There's an overseer's log, so go on then. Why were you here exactly? Overseer's log. Somewhere in the mountains. Oh, not good. Not good. Not good. Just, just trying to not, trying to focus. But the pain is unreal. So bad. Why don't I do this now, while I can? I'm, I'm af I'm afraid I might pass out. Was attacked. Some kind of. I, I think it was wearing a gas mask, a, a, a heavy coat, but, but not human, not human. No stim packs left. Funny joke in here about practicing what you preach. This is, this is. The Overseer, signing off, hopefully not for the last time. Well, I didn't see a corpse in there that would correspond to her, like no one wearing a vault suit, so... Uh, Alright, let's actually follow up what I was saying. Head due south towards Site Charlie, see if that came... Uh, before or after she made it to the actual final little area. Well, maybe that's where she died. Maybe she was injured on the way because, uh, hang on, it was Alpha first, then Bravo, right? Yeah, I think Alpha was first, and then Bravo's, like, way up north, so for some reason she did it in a weird order. Possibly she was wounded here, and we're going to find her corpse here. She made it to the last place, found there was no way in. This might be the end of the Overseer, right? Flipping here. So, big water tower or something symbol, but... Oh, first, RNG processing. So far, nothing here but ghouls. Surprisingly high-level ghouls, though. Be a little bit careful in this part of the world. All right, before we head down to Charlie, let's figure out what's going on here, because this is a surprisingly large area. To be honest, we've got ourselves... Yeah multiple buildings. Also, I need to do a little bit of armor touching up at some point. My armor is badly damaged. Okay. Assassin's studded right leg. Honestly, I should probably just replace that. I mean, I don't do much in the way of PvP and it just does not have much in the way of condition. Oh, the left leg's looking bad as well and that's just a generic piece. So, all right, be on the lookout for new legs. Well, I've found a terminal and I think I've figured out what's going on here. So our goal at RNG is to make work an enjoyable place. Feel free to take a breather and head to the locker room for board game hour. Because workers are more important than profit. Right, okay, so I'm guessing what's going on here is this place was just a cover for the actual launch silo. So they just needed a couple of people hanging around to make it look legit, but didn't really have anything for them to do. This isn't really a processing plant, or if it is, it just does like some token processing. Whatever processing is exactly, I'm not 100% clear on that. In fact, speak of the devil, here's Site Charlie's log, except this isn't where Site Charlie is, or rather, maybe it is. Yeah, it's this elevator right here. And I'm guessing, just like the others, uh, still not allowed in. Right, now, Overseer, were you critically wounded when you actually got here, or was this just before you were attacked by a bear or whatever? No, not a bear. John, it was blatantly a mole miner. She described it. It was a mole miner. Overseer's log. Missile silo Charlie. I've now verified that all three missile silos still have fully operational security. No way inside yet. But I'll scour all of Appalachia if I have to. Alright, so no direction whatsoever. But I guess we have actually picked up, yeah, her trail further down the line. Because... Presumably, yeah, we've never been pointed at Defiance, so I'm guessing her at Defiance is post that. So, yeah, in which case, I've got to assume that chronologically, the last thing we have from the Overseer is her being wounded in that hotel, because she made no mention of recovery, as far as I'm aware, in any of the other tapes. 
And we've got confirmation of my theory right there over on the actual, well, whoever is running this place's terminal. We've received reports that some of your employees have expressed curiosity about the silo elevator. You know the arrangement. We keep things operating. You keep things quiet. Right. So yeah, whoever was actually running the actual silos, presumably the government, were just paying these guys to just run a skeleton team purely for the sake of appearances. All right, here we go. This is actually a good little way to scout out where I'm after. We got ourselves some form of little camp down there, but beyond it, the Uncanny Caverns, which is big and obvious and a landmark and it's on the map. So I want to go and, oh, I shouldn't have tried to do this. Oh, this was risky. This was very risky, but it seems to have worked out on this occasion. Marvellous. And we've got ourselves... Oh, bloater glowing one. Right, shotgun. I really need more shotgun shells. I should be taking ammo, Smith. I really should be taking ammo, Smith. Right, where, my good man, are you? Because you need to be... Yeah, you need to have your legs taken out from under you. None of you, none of you, none of you. You guys are all fine. Yeah, that's right. You can just go down to a couple of normal bullets. Where are you off to right now, my good man? Because if you want to come over here, that's fine. I'm happy to take your legs out from under you, and that can be the end of it. There we go. Right, now you. Yep, yeah, I just want to take your legs out, please. Anytime you're ready. There we go. He's down on the ground. Definitely a very good idea. And that means we can now finish you off with the newly upgraded Blade of Bastets. Spot on. Oh, and speak of the devil, he's got a left leg on him right now, which is not great, to be honest. But I do need to swap that out. Yeah, this thing's almost gone. It's got more damage resistance on it. Go on then, why not? Right, a few more ghouls around here, but mostly... Oh, this is cool. It's an adventure playground. Oh, there was nothing I loved more as a kid than adventure playgrounds. Adventure playgrounds were just flipping awesome. Like at Centre Parks in the UK, where me and my family went sometimes. Oh, the giant adventure playground, which in all fairness probably wasn't actually that giant. But it felt like it was giant when I was a kid. Alright, that was flipping awesome. Now the only slight problem here is... Uh, this part of the world brings me a little worryingly close to... A fisher site. The fisher site that's, yeah, very close by to the actual White Springs, which is, yeah, right there in fact. You can see the golf course. Do not fall off. Be very careful. Go down step by step. Lovely. And then make a jump over to here. Then I think that's safe. Yep, that was fine. <laughs> The difference between perfectly 100% safe and you've just lost two thirds of your health and you're now dead is very minor. It goes from nothing to you're dead very quickly. All right, emerging from the forest and we've got ourselves... I see a robot there, but I think it's still inside its little case. I swear I just saw... Hang on. No, you guys are all inside your cases. All right, well, here's the miner's monument. I could have sworn I saw a super mutant mentioned a moment ago. These guys seem to be... Oh, oh. Yeah, I'm seeing something all right. Am I seeing... Oh, flip. Oh, flip. No, I'm just, I'm just here to look at the monument. Like, you've set up the monument for a reason, right? Oh, bloody hell. Right, you can just die, actually. Right, so, ah... There were protests here. That's why these guys were actually fundamentally hostile. Because, uh, yeah, there were actually protests at the actual minor monument for the current miners who were being put out of work. So, okay, that all makes sense, sure. Oh, we got ourselves a rad storm on our hands too. Just saw a flash and... Honestly, it doesn't seem like this... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, I see you over there. I see you. Yep, there's definitely a flash and a few rads coming in, but it's not much. It's not much. Let's just try and stay away from the trouble. Oh, I'm here in trouble. Yep, I've found myself the uncanny caverns. Don't know what's so uncanny about them. Probably best I just step inside right now. Like, you know, if a rat sees me, that's one thing. If an actual Scorch Beast sees me, that's another. Ah, but I think I know what we might actually find in the Uncanny Caverns, due to a tape that's been left at the front desk. The Curse of the Wendigo. Got it. Well, while I try and make my way up to 
yeah, the little actual, uh, the radio tower up top, because I think the Scorched Beast is naffed off. Let's actually get ourselves uh, the Curse of the Wendigo. Go on, then. It has been said that money is the root of all evil. So, when greed knows no bounds and avarice goes unchecked, what other appetite might take hold? Tonight's gripping tale, Curse of the Wendigo, choose over this very question. at the Corvego Auto Assembly Plant in Huntersville, West Virginia, where plant owner and operator Richard Moore is known for squeezing every ounce of profitability from his workforce. I'm willing to bet money that what's gone on here is he's been converted into a werewolf. Well, I guess we're going into the caverns then. And yeah, some notes that were... Oh, all right, you're already dead. Yeah, some notes did actually... That's just a stuffed polar bear. That's fine as well. That's also not terrifying. Yeah, there's like a lights out portion of the tour. We might be going into some creepy staged horror right now. All right, what lives in here? Because it's going to be a Wendigo, John. You know it's a Wendigo, but hopefully just one Wendigo. Right, for the most part, just rad rats by the looksy of it. Yeah, but there'll probably be a Wendigo at the end. Ooh, this is nice. There's actually a place to grab a photo here. Oh, go on then. I'll have a photo here as well. Oh, that's the inside of my face. Ah. But I'm sitting on one side, so there's room for someone else to... No, 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 no. In that case, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to stand up right here, okay? We're going to have a lovely photo next to the sign. There we go. Spot on. Before you is the entrance to the Night Kid room, where the mysterious half-man, half-bat was first discovered. Night Kid was found in complete darkness and surrounded by bats. He was two feet tall, weighed 19 pounds, and had been feeding on moths to survive. You can explore this part of Appalachian history and more at a reasonable price as part of our wild cave tour, sold separately. Head right to continue the tour. 
Please let members of Premium Guided Tours pass before proceeding. Alright. So, I assumed there was going to be a when to go. But that sounds like some form of Scorched. Or possibly some form of Mothman if he was eating moths. And also we've got ourselves... Traps. Someone's actually trapped up this area. Right. So, well... You're not necessarily the night boy. You might just be someone who's moved in since, because this was just an excellent place to hold out or what have you. But okay. I'm a little bit unnerved by this whole situation. Some say if you're quiet enough at the right time of day, you can hear night kids scurry around the dark recesses of the cave ceiling. Now everybody in the tour group, take a brief moment of silence. I don't dare. I'm genuinely scared. I don't like it when horror elements come into Fallout games. It unnerves me. I'm not good with horror. The next stop in our tour is the impressive Poseidon's Passage. So named after the ancient Greek god of the sea, earthquakes, storms, and horses. That's actually true. He was known for his association with horses. Well done, game. That's actually a good bit of knowledge that's not widely known. The third stop on our premium Wild Cave Tour is the Dead End. Where the final standoff between Night Kid and the Federal Marshals took place. Night Kid, now an aggressive five foot tall predator, was cornered and captured by the Marshals after a lengthy and deadly chase through the caverns. He remained in captivity for a decade before he was freed under mysterious circumstances and returned to the caverns where he lives to this day. Step up the right path to continue the tour. Watch out for bats. Whatever's in there, if there's anything in there, it's not upsetting the rats. So, was he just a, a rat? What was the night kit? Unless he just hasn't spawned in yet. I'm getting out the shotgun. Where is he? Hello? Hello, a thing called the dr- Ooh! Ho, ho, ho! So, damage 277, which is... Uh, yeah, bear in mind, that's an unboosted 277. Like, my own... Why is that sort of by weight right now? Yeah, that's 250, my black powder pistol. It's 277. That's good! You know what? I'm gonna keep that. I may never use it, but I'm going to keep it. Is there a final sting in the tail here? Or have we made it through without running into a Wendigo or whatnot? Because, okay, some of that was fun and creepy, but, like, it's a bit weird to do all that setup and put all that effort in if there wasn't actually any form of boss waiting for me at any point during the tour. I mean, yes, it was creepy, but I was actually, like, you know, ultimately expecting some form of payoff for what the Night Kid was. No. Yes. I'm just going to step outside in case there's something waiting there too. No. We're back out in the daylight. And everything seems to be under control. Right, so yeah. In the end, that cavern is, well, well put together and creepy and whatever. It's a very good example of what I've said is I think, yeah, the main problem with Fallout 76, which is excellent at setup, bad at payoff. Now, to the south of me is Lewisburg in the Ash Sheep. Now, I've been there before, but it looks like there's one thing around there I missed. What would appear to be a cemetery at the very edge of town. Because any deeper in town than the very edge, I'd already have seen it and already been there. Also, bloody hell, a Mr. Fuzzy Token quest just showed up for the first time in... I think it's been weeks since I've seen that. I mean, God only knows how you're supposed to actually collect enough Mr. Fuzzy tokens to get the exclusive Mr. Fuzzy gear because uh, bloody hell that's the first time I've actually seen one of those daily quests pop up since yeah the very first time I actually visited where I assume you get all three of them uh, by default but since then not a single daily quest for Mr. Fuzzy tokens actually popped up and hello over there glowing bloke flies uh, I think we'll just take out the little bugs uh, right so yes a slightly unpleasant cemetery right here now, just actually broken down some junk to get myself back under weight limit here. 
Now, these here air purifiers, because I was expecting to actually find what to do with these when I actually explored Hornwright headquarters, and I never did. So hang on, now I know a lot more about the game. Let's have a little look-see at these. So, Hornwright Industrial, system unavailable. Fine, so air purification. Back to here, system unavailable. Now, I've never seen a quest shop about these. I've never seen a daily thing or an event, anything. So, in which case, how do we get these on? Because if they're here, they must do something, presumably. Anyway, let's crack on. That's enough in this part of the world, I'd say. Let's actually move on to... Yeah, Charleston itself, though. There is clearly a building. Okay, one more. There's something up here. And it's a mine. And mines can be very valuable, because mines, of course, can be sources of raw resources. That's kind of, you know, the entire point of the ash heap. So, uh, some mines can be valuable, yes. Oh, is this just one of those abandoned mine shaft things? Because if it is, that's going to be... Oh, no. No, it's not. It's not. And there's also... There's an unmarked building up here. There is the the burning mine. Oh, sorry. I didn't realise you guys were all here. Right, sorry. There's a few more people here than I was expecting, actually. That's fine. Mole miners are not a problem in this day and age. You are... Oh, you're level 14. I don't think you're a problem, really. We'll just finish you off. No problem at all. Right, so this here is the burning mine, apparently. And hello over there finish you off with a nice two shots to the head. These guys still have an okay chance of actually having shotguns on them, which is not the worst thing in the world. No actual entrance to the mine, though. So how do we... Aha! The burning mine. Ooh. Uh-oh. It's a scorch beast right flipping there. And that is... Hang on. What's that to the south? That's... That's not the interest to- That's double! Okay, the Scorch Beast is coming this way. Go! Get down! Get down! Go! Okay. I know this thing is called The Burning Mine, and that probably means it's a bad place to be, but it's a better place than the Ash Sheep when there's two Scorch Beasts circulating, alright? This is- Oh, blimey heck. I'm guessing the Burning Mine is a little bit- Yeah, on fire, or- Oh, if I drop down- Ooh. Oh dear. Right, well, I've got a bad feeling about this. I do. You know what? This here, this is what power armor was flipping made for. Yeah? Yeah, I'm deploying the power armor. Right, lights on, though. Oh, this light's even weaker. Right, down we go. So, there's going to be a mole miner somewhere around here. And we've got ourselves. Hello? Where are you? Oh, yeah, I see ya. I see, uh, you're going to struggle to make it through any of this, by the way. So, we've got another one of those mines that are just on fire. Visibility is actually, yeah, even worse here, I think, than uh, we actually had previously. Okay, may as well just, you know, grab all of this. Because these guys have got, yeah, these guys have got useful ammo on them. Definitely useful. You can just die, by the way. That's all absolutely fine, too. Problem is, visibility is so poor, I can't even see what it is I'm probably looking for. And why are you already wounded? Possibly you had a little bit of a fight with uh, some rad rats. Right, well, keep going. Keep going down. That seems like a good place to be going. If down is an option, we do down. Alright, and then maybe later we go back up again, I guess. But... In a mine, when you're exploring, if you want to get deeper into it, down feels like the right way to go. Ah, that feels like that might be the end of the line right there, though. I don't think I'm getting past that. No, I think that's the end. Alright. So, in which case... Okay, back up, back up, back up. Let's just start making our way through. Because clearly I came in through a hatch I'm not getting back out of. So, I need to work my way around to a door, which I'm going to guess is in that big building... That was, yeah, down from me. That I saw just down the hill. This is like... Hang on. Can I tell where I am by the... Hmm. Not really with any accuracy. But yeah, being inside my power armor right now, that does feel like a good thing to... Hello, is there a rat there or something? Go away! Oh good, I found a way out. Marvellous, which also involves uh, passing by a workstation. Better and flipping better. So, okay. 
This is presumably going to lead out into that warehouse I saw, which is probably not really a good thing. I will say, these smoky mines are very good as a dungeon type. At least insofar as, yeah, they're very not linear next to some dungeons. And because of the smoke and the fact they all look very similar, it is actually very disorientating. Which is, you know, an appropriate thing for a mine that's supposed to be on fire and full of smoke. That, you know, makes a whole lot of sense. Now, oh yeah, the two Scorch Beasts. Oh, this ain't gonna be fun. Alright, where are we? Oh, well we got bigger problems immediately. Which is we got, oh bloody hell, no, we've got two problems at once. We've got ourselves mole miners, uh, and we've got ourselves those Scorch Beasts nearby. Though, presumably, the Scorch Beasts are, yeah, not around here. Because, oh, this isn't where I was expecting to be. Oh, maybe it is. That's probably the building I was seeing before. That's not a Scorch Beast, that's just a random bit of branch. Right. So that'll be the building I saw right there. And yes, we are indeed just down the hill from where I thought we were spot on. And hello over there. Right, we'll just finish you off. And if we're very lucky, yep, that's plenty of shotgun shells. Uh-oh. Yeah, I hear ya. I hear you overhead. Right. I think we want to get out of here. I'm not up for a Scorch Beast fight right now. I feel like I've discovered... Yeah, there's one mine in that direction I haven't seen yet, but honestly, I'm cool with that. Let's just at this point fast travel over to Charleston. Alright, back in the Capitol building once more. And on this occasion, I think I want to be going up towards the upper floors and... Well, someone else has been here recently. Ah oh, yes, and while I'm here, some people in the comments did mention... Yeah, I actually missed a quite cool little audio log. The actual, well, one, there's actually a photo of the original Rosalind there, and the tape of her interrogation that uh, puts a bit of a different spin on the final fate of Charleston. So let's just slap that in while I'm looking for the thing. Interrogation of one Jane Doe, sole captive raider in custody after a deadly attack here at approximately 10.30 p.m. tonight, December 24th, 2082. Girl? You and yours got some nerve. On Christmas Eve, no less. <laughs> now I'll ask again. What is your name? Fuck you. That's F as in Frank. You and me. <gasps> if that's how we gotta do this, then that's how we do it. Now, cut the crap or he'll hit you again. <laughs> oh, that's rich. You think this is a joke? You killed a whole mess of people out there, and now you're gonna answer for it. Mm, nah. David's gonna come for me, and when he gets here, ooh, he's gonna be mad. He'll kill every last one of you if he has to. So here's how it's gonna be. You're gonna let me walk right out of this cell. You'll send me off with a big bag of Christmas goodies to take home to my David. And maybe we'll forget any of this ever happened. David, huh? So we got David Thorpe's work. Your friend here? You know, he's the guy who killed two very brave and selfless responders who went up to your resort up there to offer help way back when. Well, well, gentlemen. I think I know how to finally draw our number one most wanted outlaw out of hiding. You wouldn't. You won't. He'll kill you. He'll kill you all. You, you just wait. He's coming for you. Keep her locked up. We'll worry about finding a way to send a message up there tomorrow. There's also just an invisible person here. And yeah, she was alive. She was actually killed by David, who thought she was already dead. So in trying to actually take his revenge, he actually killed her. Which is kind of funny. Marvellous. Don't know why this guy's just invisible. He's just invisible. He just feels like being invisible. That's fine. So, Senator Blackwell's terminal. Let's start off with this today. So, first things first, we've got to go, yeah, installing that master holotape whatever -y thingy. Ah, unable to bypass terminal lockdown. Right, so, what do we do next, then? Here we go, security lab downstairs. 
So, need to manually take care of this business. Accounts. Account lockdown. So that needs to be undone. Samuel Blackwell. Unlock that terminal. Nice! Alright, now we can get back into his terminal properly. So first things first, before we actually load up the tape, we can just access his day-to-day -day emails. Maybe learn a bit more about him, his daughter, Hornwright, all of that business. Ah, here's interesting. So part of the reason that Blackwell and Clay like each other is, uh, yeah, back in June of 2077, Blackwell actually interceded to try and get Raleigh Clay released from prison. Now, it's quite possible that he technically did break some laws. Definitely, the people who went on to become the Free State did some stuff that would have been illegal at the time. But, yeah, this makes a bit more sense all of a sudden, sure. Nothing much we haven't already seen, except for the questions done to be asked. When it comes to White Springs, is Voltec overly involved? And are they trustworthy? Definitely not. Under no circumstances is Voltec ever trustworthy. Pat yourself on the back, because you just got yourself some top secret security codes off a US Senator's terminal. Next up, the closest relay tower you can find, where you get to upload all that hard earned data. You're officially halfway done with the final part of this process. I mean, it's not like I'll ever really know, but one can hope, right? Did she just say halfway? Because I was really hoping to be more than halfway done at this point. Right, so now, Master Holotape in the Relay Tower Terminal. Now, by any chance, is that the- Aha! That's the area I literally was just in, so that's very bloody convenient. Alright, job done. What's up next, then? Well, by the sounds of it, we're down to, well, one, pest control. Once we're done with pest control, though, we should be down to, yeah, just actually rebooting the system. And that, well, looks like it might be it. Which would be very, very good if so. Ignoring any and all possible wishes, you are officially the most amazing person in all of Appalachia. And hopefully not the only one. The Scorch detection system is fully up and running. If you had any idea how long it took us to just get half the system functional, the lives lost. My brother, dad, and yours truly are. Now whenever the Scorched are around, the detectors will pick them up and broadcast a message to your Pip-Boy. All that's left is the means to fight them off. If you haven't already, check my terminal to read about the traps we've created for the Scorch Beasts. Hopefully, they're still in working order, and they're your best bet at making those flying freaks manageable. Beyond that, the only ones with any real means were the Brotherhood of Steel. Obviously, they didn't last, but they packed some serious firepower. They took their last stand somewhere in the bog at a place called Fort Defiance. But, thanks to their code names, I have no idea where it is. You'll want to start at Camp Venture, Eddie's old survival training center. I've also put everything I've got on the Brotherhood under an entry called Fort Defiance on my terminal. Good luck out there. And, thanks. If this holotape is playing, it means our lives and all this work something. Coming to fruition, we've got ourselves a special left leg of some description there. Got myself some XP and whatnot. Go on, what are you giving me here, game? Plan for, ooh, a whole bunch of traps, a light combat torso, and a regenerating, ooh. I tell you what, a bit of light health regen. I'll take that. Yes, thank you very, very much indeed. I believe the left leg I was looking for a replacement for anyway, wasn't I? Yeah, right now that's nothing particularly interesting. That's level 50. It's it's not very good. But I'm willing to take it anyway, just because, yeah, a bit of low-level health regen is very, very welcome indeed. So naturally, of course, I've already read her terminal because that triggered the beginning of uh, the Defiance quest. So that means, uh, technically, next up is Belly of the Beast. And I haven't actually been told to go and check out Sam Blackwell's bunker. Though, of course, we've now actually read his term. There was nothing about his bunker there. So I'm guessing, technically, next up is supposed to be Belly of the Beast. Okay, that's lovely then. But it also sounds like, yeah, she wanted me to go and check out 
Camp Venture, or Venture, whatever it was called, which I'm pretty sure is the place I was supposed to be going to anyway. Ah, conveniently, Camp Venture is exactly where I need to go for forbidden knowledge. I didn't even realise that. Well, sounds to me like all roads lead to Camp Venture right now, so go on then. May as well go and say hello to it at the bare minimum. Here we go, starting from that red rocket that's on the road that leads over to Valley Galleria. If we just head, yeah, pretty much due south-southwest, there's, oh, we got a couple of super mutant overlords in the swamp apparently, and I, I'm stuck against a, stuck against a root. You know what, I'm just going to work around you guys, not interested. Wait, what the, what? What? What is that noise? Is that a bear? But that was just a very, very big... Oh, no! Hello! It's one of you lads. No trouble. No trouble whatsoever. And we've got ourselves another little treetop settlement here. Okay, that's cute. You know what? No trouble with you lads. I like you lads. I'm just gonna walk away and I'm gonna live up in the tree. And you can have the ground. And everything will be fine. So, okay, possibly when we saw the note about people living up in trees, uh, it might have been referring to uh, this place rather than the other settlement I found that was further north. But then again, that was for loads of people. This feels like this is just for one person. So, uh, more likely it was actually... Ooh, small guns bobblehead. The actually good one. Marvellous. Also, this place goes really, really high up. Like, ridiculously high up. I love it. We're right into the two-dimensional part of the tree right now. <laughs> yeah, possibly they shouldn't have let us get up this high. It, uh, it doesn't look great up here, to be honest. I mean, okay, you've got quite a nice view insofar as, you know, the view goes quite a long distance. But you're also, yeah, you're right up by the two-dimensional bit of the trees. Where the world doesn't look at its best, it must be said. Got a little crow's nest here. Okay, this is cool, though. It is nice to be this high up. There's also a ratty skirt here, which I'm not sure I've actually seen anywhere before, so that's nice. Okay, where am I supposed to be? Oh, yeah, sorry, I was supposed to be going somewhere. You know what? Probably best I... Ooh, scouting report. Hang on, might be something useful here. So made it far north as Moss Town, Harpers Ferry, Barclay Springs. Uh, fine. So we know about all of that business already. Nothing too much we didn't already know. Gotcha. And a second ratty skirt. And ooh, a green shirt and combat boots. All right. Whole bunch of clothing up here. All right. Fast way down if you'd be so cut. No, I'm sort of hitting some of the branches. Keep going down. There we go. No trouble with you, you magnificent majestic bastard. We'll just leave you be as you don't seem to want trouble. Camp Venture. So this is like a cool survivalist training place where people would come for like a little bit of a survivalist experience. And it looks like, yeah, actually quite large. And we've got ourselves all sorts of stuff here. A little kind of firing range, all sorts of bits and pieces. Ah, yes, and cargo bot. So that's the first thing. Scorch zealot somewhere around here. Yeah, let's just actually call up that there cargo bot. Move that quest on a little bit. So, yeah, cargo bot supply drop. Marvellous. Dangerous tech. What dangerous tech? What are we talking about? It's all Brotherhood of Steel. Oh, yes, of course. This was, of course, Brotherhood of Steel. And that moves on forbidden knowledge. So, with the last cargo bot down, CD Knight Wilson has ordered all dangerous technology to be stored in a secure cache in the basement of the hut vest. What's a hut vest? Also, I should really go and find the hut vest in order that I can steal everything inside it. So, cargo bot is apparently en route. Good, good, good. So now we just need to let him show up. He's presumably on his way. And there's also... Ah! Is the hut vest right here by any chance? Yes! The hut vest is apparently right flipping here, though. I may have just drawn a bit of attention to myself. Sorry, who's shooting at who right now? Are you guys coming at me? Because I felt like I was actually in, like, caution, not danger there. But okay, you know what? If you want to shoot at me, I'm just going to critical you in the head. Good luck, you stupid bastards. And here comes the cargo bot. Right, what are we supposed to be doing with you precisely? Oh yes, attaching the signal booster. Right, and now it wanders off and I've no idea why I just did that. 
completely flipping lost, but I'm sure it's fine. And that's boosted a distress signal so that something, something, something. Ah, so now the distress beacon is somewhere up there. Fine, we've been to that part of the world already. No problem whatsoever. I'm more interested in the hut vest, whatever one of those is. Because however well you've locked it down with passwords or locks, I can get in. I have got three for three on both of those skills. And I'm an actual member of the Brotherhood too, so this really ought to work out. Here we go, whole bunch of stuff locked away. This isn't quite the right location, but it'll do as a starting point because, screw it. Get all my relevant skills on right now, okay? Get rid of that. Expert and Master Picklock. And Demo Expert, get rid of that. Get all my flipping hacking on. Alright, we are doing all of the hacking, all of the lock picking right now. So, secure room number one. Looks like fairly generic loot, albeit of a, yeah, decently high quality, really. Ah, and something potentially quite important here. Formation of the Brotherhood of Steel locally. Okay. Appalachia online, Captain. I know most of you love America. Good old red, white, and blue. But those of us who served at Mariposa know something. America failed. Not because of its citizens who lived clean lives filled with hardship in a never-ending war. Certainly not because of its fighting men and women. God bless them. No. Its leaders failed us. Senators, generals, presidents, all those bastards. Their failure almost destroyed all mankind. But I look around here, and I see survivors. People too stubborn. People too damn ornery to die. We've fought and we've endured and we finally have a small patch of safety. But having a home isn't enough. We need something more. What we need is purpose. We cannot look to the America of old for that purpose. We have to build our own. So tonight, as we break bread together, let us forge together something new, something strong, something we can be proud of, something we can build upon. We'll preserve what's best of what's come before us and use it. And one day, we will reclaim what was lost. Let us forge a brotherhood of steel. Ooh, we said the thing. None of the other tapes anything particularly interesting, but... A couple of rather interesting letters that give us a bit of a different perspective from what we've heard so far. So, you know, Maxim was all on board with all this because, you know, he was the one that came up with it. But, Sarah, I'm starting to think coming out to venture was a huge mistake. These people are nuts. You know, they call themselves knights and paladins. What the heck is going on here? I thought if I joined the Brotherhood, I could learn to protect you and the kids. All they want to do is create soldiers who are ready to die in battle. Maybe I should quit and come home. Another one over here as well. An anonymous diary page. I bide my time and bite my lip. I joined the service on my birthday. It was the proudest day of my life when I became a ranger. Almost as proud as I was to be tapped into Taggedy's Thunder. And now, squires, knights, paladins, what the hell. I try not to roll my eyes. I try to never let my unit down. But sometimes on watch, I think about picking a direction. And I think west. So... There's a fair few people dotted around here that thought, yeah, the reorganization of the army into this sort of uh, vaguely knightly, almost religious order was a bit silly. <laughs> just a little bit on the silly side. So yeah, you don't often get that sort of perspective. Normally when we've seen the Brotherhood, it's just been around for so long, people just treat it as normal. So it's kind of cool to see, you know, some people would very naturally be deeply skeptical of it when it first started off. That's very, very cool indeed. Now, hacking away through this door as well, what have we got inside the command tent? Now this is interesting. So, 2081, March roster, people currently set to attend for March training. And we've got ourselves, yeah, a whole bunch of familiar names here. So, Jesus Sunday and his brother, of course, that didn't end desperately well. All of the Clays, we've got Ella Ames right there. So, yeah, a whole bunch of people came here, except back then was this place actually Brotherhood. That would probably be before the Brotherhood moved in and took it over. 
I guess. It would certainly seem odd if every single one of these people wants to receive Brotherhood training, unless they just took advantage of the Brotherhood and then just snuck out in the night as soon as they'd got hold of some weapons, training, armour, whatever. No, never mind. This next group I'm about to take on is mostly Free States members plus stragglers. Time to whip these kids into shape, maybe even convert those few who haven't seen the light of day yet. Raleigh says he wants my best, so I aim to please. These kids won't find any mercy in my camp. So... At this point in history, 2081, there was no real animosity between the Brotherhood and the Free States. The Brotherhood was still, you know, cooperating with everyone around them. That was maybe before Maxon made it a little bit more fanatical and zealoty. And as a result of that, yeah, the Free States were just like, here's a bunch of people, do you want to train them up? And the Brotherhood were like, yeah, sure, that makes sense, that's a good public service. So... That's kind of an interesting look into the very early days. Nothing much else there, just a note that Ella Ames was particularly talented, which of course we're already very well familiar with. Ah, the Commander's Terminal. Nothing too much so far, just a little bit of an insight into the Brotherhood's thinking. So they brought this place online to top up their numbers. So they bring in recruits. So from the first class, nine recruits signed up adventure in the last month, and two of them quit. They weren't cut out for the life. And of the remaining six, hang on, I'm sorry, I hate to point out your maths here, but you're missing one. One of them's gone missing. If you got nine recruits and two quit, then you haven't got remaining six. You've got remaining seven. All right, whoever wrote this note, you might want to demote yourself just a little bit because, yeah, you need to go back to some basics here. Yeah, now much else here. So let's just move on down the hill because I still want to go and find Hut Vest. All right, under the ground in here. Now, how do we get down to... Aha, here we go. Now, they promised that this was basically unbreakable. Now, if anyone can break it, it's going to be me. So, requires requires skill zero. You know what? I think I can handle that. Right, a little bit deeper in here. Bunch of just rad roaches. Go over to Blade of Bass Steps. Probably got... Aha! I've already got a secure storage key. That was actually in the barracks. We've also got... Ah! The schematics. Do I have any schematics right now? Apparently, I have one. And that actually gets me a completed quest, because I have saved the schematics. Marvellous. So, uh, what does that get me, to be precise? Basically nothing of value. Alright then, marvellous. Though it does get me a level up. That's probably quite useful. Yes, levelling up is quite nice to do. And tragically, it would appear that, yes, inside this incredibly secure bunker that they promised no one could possibly ever get into, there doesn't actually seem to be anything particularly good in here. Just the usual stuff. Fuses and whatever. Come on, game. Give us something good. The bare minimum, give me a named unique weapon in here. That's just a bunch of, yeah, basic combat knives, uh, missiles. You know what? I'll take a pile of grenades. A pile of grenades is fine. That's nice, I suppose. But... If you're going to make a big deal about how this place is completely, you know, inaccessible and diddly diddly d, at least give me a unique named legendary in here. Come on. Still, I see what we've got up next. Either we're heading north to track the distress beacon to its source, which we don't where it is, it's, it's down in those sewers, or we're heading south to pick up with the Brotherhood. We appear to be completely done with Abish. Good. She had me worried when she said, you're halfway through. It's like, oh no. This quest has gone on too long already. Bloody hell, Abby, give me a break. But no, 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 it seems we're fine. We're all 100% good. Hang on, one level up as well. Go on then, let's actually just do a level up before we wrap up today. What do I want to take now? Ah, yes, a very important one. I do want to actually have ready to go here. Starch jeans. Because when you get up to starch jeans rank two, then that means Radaway can never cure mutations. In other words, you get a mutation you want, you get to keep it forever. Now, I'm not sure if I want to be running with a permanent mutation, but I'd like the option. So, I'm just going to take starch genes now. We're not going to actually put it on immediately or anything. Still, as I say, we'll pick up with all of that next time, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah, with the Brotherhood already maybe half, maybe even more done, we might well be ready to move straight on actually into the White Springs itself pretty darn quickly. The map is, yeah... Filling up very, very fast indeed. All that's really left at this point is a little bit down south in the Savage Divide and the Cranberry Bog. And that is exactly where the Brotherhood is taking us next time. So, hopefully, you'll join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. This has been Fallout 76. Thank you very much and goodbye. 
Oh, Timmy, it gets much worse yet. Because your dad's also dead. Garden gnome, go. Yes! Come back and accept your inevitable gnoming. Dance with your dad, Timmy. Dance with your dad. Gnomed! Oh, I've emancipated his limbs from the rest of him.